The day you try to grow your relationship with Christ will also be the day where the enemy wants to attack you the most. You have to realize the reason why it's so hard to read the word, the reason why it's so hard to want to go and pray or just have that desire to pray is because the enemy doesn't want you to do it. So it's your spirit fighting against your flesh or your flesh fighting against your spirit. It actually talks about this in Galatians 5. Yes, your spirit is willing to go and read the word. Your spirit is willing to go and read the Bible, but your flesh doesn't want you to. And you know, those are the three ways that the enemy actually attacks you. So your flesh, the lust of the eyes, so the things we look at, and then also the things of this world. So if you want to grow your relationship with Christ, you have to realize the spiritual battle we're going through. Because if you want to grow your relationship with the Holy Spirit, then you must realize the spiritual battle. and You must win that spiritual battle. And also, the reason why we have to win these battles is to show God that we actually are willing to put our faith in him, are willing to go through the hardships to grow that relationship with Christ. Because later on down the line, when it starts to get hard to read the word, when the trials and tribulations come, come our way, we must be ready and grounded inside the word. We must be ready to continue to go even when it's hard. So that's why at the start of wanting to grow your relationship with Christ, it may be hard. So that's why in this video, I'll be talking about the five ways to actually grow your relationship with Christ. And the first step to grow your relationship with Christ is to repent of your sin and win that first spiritual battle. It says in James chapter four, verse eight, it says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. As God may try to draw you in, he may, he may send warning signs your way. But it's our job to come close to God and then he will come close to us. It's like if we take one step closer to God, God will take 10 steps coming closer to us. And it says, wash your hands, you sinners, representing repentance. Meaning that if we want to go watch pornography, if we want to go, you know, um, do some drugs or go to parties and hang out with worldly friends, we are no longer pursuing that. But we're pursuing God's forgiveness. We're pursuing God and seeking God. And that's how we can wash our hands. Because we can't try to go closer to God if we're not willing to deny the flesh and deny those desires to want to go do the things of the world. Because then our loyalty will be divided between God and then the world. So that's why I started off at the beginning of the video saying that the devil will attack you the most to try to get you to go back to those things. Because you cannot grow your relationship with Christ if you're still divided between the world and God. You still want to pursue the things of the world. But you also want to pursue God. It doesn't work like that. The second way to grow your relationship with Christ is realizing that we are in a spiritual battle. Now, this should have been first because we have to realize the spiritual battle that we are in. Because if we want to win a battle, then we must know that we are in a battle. It says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So you have to realize that when you don't want to go and read your word, when you don't want to go and pray, you have to ask yourself, why? Why do I not want to go and read the word? I know it will benefit me, but why? It's because you have to realize that you're in a spiritual battle and the devil doesn't want you to go and read the word. He doesn't want you to go and pray. And once you realize that you are getting attacked, that's when you will go and pray even when you don't feel like it. That's when you will go and read the word, knowing that if you don't read the word, then you're going to fall back into temptation. That's also with the same thing with temptations. If you are getting tempted heavily, or if you're going through a spiritual battle, if you're going through a lot of the trials and tribulations, you should look at it as spiritual and not physical. Because when you're going through testing, when you're going through temptations, you'll know the word says in James chapter one, verse 12, it says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love them. So when you're going through a temptation, you will know that, oh, this is a spiritual battle that I have to win. That's what we're gonna have to go through. And you're going to endure that knowing that you'll be blessed after because you passed God's test. And you will also know that when you're going through trials and tribulation, that it's not that, oh, God is not here anymore. You will know that in Romans chapter five, verse three through five, it says we rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance helps strength our character and our character strength, our confidence, hope of salvation. This hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because it has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. So that's why it's so important that you change your mind from physical thinking to spiritual thinking. Change your perspective on the word and how you view life. Because if you view the word carnal minded, then you wouldn't understand it. You won't understand how to apply it to your life because you won't see the spiritual things behind it. 
The next three ways I like to think of it as growing a relationship with any other person or a friendship with any other person. Because you have to realize that God actually wants to be your friend. He wants to be your best friend. It says in John chapter 15, 13, verse 14, it says, there is no greater love than this than to lay down one's life for a friend. You are my friend if you do what I command. So you have to realize that God actually wants to be your friend. Not someone who just looks down at you for messing up or this big dictator that just wants to tell you what to do. No, he actually wants the best for you. And that's why he laid down his life for you. But just like any other friendship, you have to get to know the person. And that brings me to number three. You must read the word. You must get to know his commandments because how can you follow his commandments if you don't know? But also you must get to know and understand who Jesus actually is by reading his word. That's why many people tell you to start with the Gospels when reading the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to get to know Jesus personally on a personal level because you know how he act, you know how he lived on this earth, and you can follow the footsteps on how he acted and follow his example. And the more you get to know God, the more you really get to understand God, that's how you can get more intimate with him. Think about any other friend. The more, the more you get to know a person, the more you get to know a friend, that's when you get more intimate with him. That's when you get more connected with him, I should say. Because if you don't know a person, you can't be connected with him. You have you can't have that connection with him. So in order to get to know Jesus, in order to get connected with Jesus, you have to get to know him more. And that's why it also says many will come to him on the day saying, Lord, Lord, but then the Lord will reply, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Because if you don't know God, then you will start to know to work iniquity. If you don't know God, then your fruit will show. And the fourth way to grow your relationship with God is to spend time with him. Now, what do I mean by spend time with God? Because just like any other, if you had a friend, a, a personal friend, you could just go out, you know, call up someone, you know, y'all can go and hang out, you know, at a restaurant and different stuff like that or go have fun. Some people think that that is not the same way that we can spend time with God. Like you can go out and spend time with God in your car, or go out in nature. You can go out and even go out to eat just by yourself, just you and God, just to read the word, to get to know God just to pray and get to know God and just think and ramble. Just talk to God about your thoughts. Talk to God about your anxieties, your worries, and just talk to God. Have that intimacy with God, that, that alone time. You can also spend time with God in the church. Spend time with God around friends. But most importantly, have somewhere where you can just go and just spend time with God. Because it says in Matthew 6, 6, but when you pray, go into your room, close the, close the door and pray to your father who is an unseen then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So have what I like to call a secret place. My secret place was in my room. It was actually in my car because that is where I got the most privacy. Yes, I could have did it in my room, but that's not enough privacy because I had other people in the house. So I went somewhere where I was so private, where it was just me and God, and I would just spend the most time with God in there. And that's what I call my secret place. And if you're wondering how you can feel God's presence, that's how you can feel God's presence. When you have a secret place and when you continue to go to that secret place to go and see God, you have to realize the intention behind it. If you're going to the secret place to just for the intention to feel something, just to feel God's presence and not to really get to know him, then you can be doing it in vain. So that's why it's important that the intention is just to love Christ and really get to know Christ and to spend that intimate time with him. And lastly, and number five is sacrifices. Sacrificing time, sacrificing your flesh, so fasting, sacrificing, you know, wanting to worship, that's that intimate time. Sacrificing idols, you have to make sacrifices in order to grow closer to God. Because when you make sacrifices, it's showing your true love for God. When you sacrifice not eating, you actually feeding the spirit, that is when you are sacrificing for God. And that's when you come more intimate with him. You have to realize like back in the day, that back before Jesus came and sacrificed himself, they used to sacrifice animals to purify themselves. Now, all we have to do is repent and believe in Jesus Christ's blood to wash us from our sins to actually get close to him. And in order to seek God's forgiveness for something, you have to repent of your sins, meaning turn away from your sins and turn to God. And that is a sacrifice because a hey, fighting them temptations is a sacrifice. You know, not giving into that temptation is a sacrifice. It's sacrificing your flesh. So putting your flesh in a chokehold and submitting to the spirit, that's a sacrifice. And the more you sacrifice on to God, that's when you become closer to God, more intimate with God. 
And that's when you will even start to feel his presence and worship because you are sacrificing so much for God. There's so many things you can sacrifice. You can sacrifice your screen time, scrolling on social media and putting putting down social media and actually opening up the word. You can sacrifice, you know, eating for a while, fasting. You can sacrifice, you know, time, you know, time at your job, you know, spend to spend time with God. Sacrifice, you know, some money to get rid of any greed that's inside of you. And the more you sacrifice, the closer you get to the Holy Spirit. And the closer you get to God, the more you grow in Christ, the more your character starts to change and become like the Holy Spirit because you start to produce the fruits of the Spirit. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. So these are the five ways that you can grow your relationship with Christ. Number one is really understanding the spiritual side of things. Number two is to repent of your sins, so to cleanse your hands and come close to God, and he'll come close to you. Number three is to really get to know Christ by reading your word, getting in your word, knowing your word, abiding in his word, and his words abiding in you. Number four is spending that alone time with God. Make sure you're getting out in nature. Make sure you have a secret place, seeking him alone so he can reward you openly. And number five is making sacrifices. Anything you, that you think you may be putting over God, sacrifice it, even if it's time with your, your girl, sometimes with you, you know, your job, sometimes, you know, gluttony. Gluttony sometimes, you know, can get you eating too much, so why don't you fast? Some screen time. Just making sacrifices for God to show that you really love him. And there's actually one more, which is forgiving someone. You cannot grow a relationship with Christ if you're holding bitterness towards someone and you haven't forgave them in your heart truly. And I'm gonna actually be talking about this in the next video. So of course, as usual, I do appreciate y'all for watching. Make sure that you apply these five things to your life and even six so that you can really start to grow your relationship with Christ. So as usual, y'all stay blessed.